Okay, let me give you a second solution to this. Uh, this approach is called analytic geometry. So you can use the coordinate system to solve geometrical problems. Now, think about this circle of radius A centered at the origin. What's the equation of this circle? Can anyone tell me? x squared plus y squared equals 1. A squared, right? Because the radius is A. Now, let's try to put that triangle, isosceles triangle on here. And uh, this point, we'll fix it to be, what's the coordinate of this, this point right at the top? Because you're going A up, and then it's on the y-axis. It's A comma 0, right? right? Now, and when we're trying to, what do we mean 0 comma 8? Oh, right, right, 0 comma 8, right. 0 comma 8, right. OK. So we're trying to come up with the, the isosceles triangle that looks like this. And uh, let's call this point as x comma y. OK. Now, if this is an isosceles triangle, what would be with this, this point right here? What's the point of this? There's a symmetry, right? It's symmetric with respect to this y-axis. So what's the coordinate of this point? It should be, this point will be negative x comma y. The y-coordinate, it has the same height, but the x-coordinate becomes negative. negative. Okay. Oh, maybe this, this would be a lot easier than this. Yes? Negative x, negative y. No, they, they have the same height. So if this is y, that's, that's also y. The value of y is negative if, if you want to. Uh, so if you're confused, at this point, x is positive and y is negative. Here, x is negative and Yeah, so x coordinate is negative. And then because x value is negative, uh, it, it, it works out. Okay? So maybe the confusion is uh, you, you think of, uh, I mean, there's difference between the, the coordinate and the variable x. Yeah. OK. Uh, now let's think about the area of this function. First, give me the, this length, the base length. So base length b is what? 2x. 2x. If you go x to the right, you're here. If you go x to the left, you're here. So this length is x, that's x. So in total, it's the base length is 2x. OK, now what about the height? From this point to that point, this has the height of what? Yeah. What's the y coordinate of this one? It's this one, right? Which we call as y, right? So what's the distance from 0, a to 0, y? A plus y. No, it, we will say we will we will say y y value is negative, so I'm going to put a minus y. Oh, okay. Okay, so so y is the actual y coordinate of this point, which is negative. So uh, if you have two locations, the the distance is obtained by subtracting the two. Okay. So that's the base and height. Now, therefore, the area is one half base times height. So they cancel and you get a x times a minus y. Okay. Now, is that function a function of a single variable? No. 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 What are the variables here? X, x and y. A is not because a is a fixed number. Okay. But x and y are something that varies. Now, can x and y be any number? It has to be within less than a for y. 
so so that's one thing. But but it has to be on this curve, right? X comma Y has to be on this curve. What does that mean? It has to satisfy this equation. Right? So now do you see the constraint and your target? What's the target? X times, no, no, no. Target is, what are you trying to maximize or minimize? That's your target, right? What are you trying to maximize or minimize? We're trying to maximize the area, which is x times a minus y. Okay, that's your target. What's the constraint? This equation. Constraint is always an equation, right? x squared plus y squared is equal to a squared. Therefore, this is your, your equation. Okay, and uh, therefore, in order to solve this question, what you have to do is you have to solve this for one of the variables and plug it in here. And using that, you can solve. Um, you, you can differentiate and then uh, solve using the calculus. Calculus. Okay, so let's solve this for y. Now, uh, let's solve this for for. Okay, let's solve this for y. x squared, no. y squared is a squared minus x squared. If you solve it, y is plus minus square root of a squared minus x squared. Now we have to be careful here. We want y to be over here, right? So which, which sign should we choose? Should be negative because it's under oh, the x-axis. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we have to choose the negative one. Y should be minus a squared minus x squared. <coughs> and then we plug that in here and we get the area equal to x times a minus negative of this thing, so it's a plus square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay, now let's try to differentiate this. Um, to differentiate this, we have to use product rule because it's a product of two functions. So a prime is a plus square root of a squared minus x squared plus then when you differentiate the second part, it's a uh, 1 over, a differentiates to 0, so we don't care. If you differentiate a square root, it's 1 over 2 times square root of whatever that's inside. But then we have to use the chain rule, so this function comes out and we have to differentiate, which is negative 2x. If you differentiate this, negative 2x. All right, now we have to set this equal to 0 and solve. Okay, now let's multiply square, square root of a squared minus x squared all across because we don't like fractions and that's the way to, to get rid of the fractions, right? So after it, I multiply a squared minus x squared everywhere, it's a times square root of a squared minus x squared. And this times this, because you have a square root multiplied to itself, the square root just goes away. And then when you multiply a square, square root of a squared minus x squared, that's gone. You have x times negative x, so it's minus x squared equal to 0. And then uh, a times square root of a squared minus x squared. This is negative 2x squared, but I'm gonna, I want to move it to the other side, so it's 2x squared minus a squared. And now you, you can square both sides. Uh, okay, so it, it does look like uh, that the trig approach is easier in terms of calculation. This one, is easy to set up and, and easy to reduce the variable, but then the problem is it's, it's hard to actually solve it. Uh, I'm not really sure if we can solve this, but let's just go on and see what we have. 
So we have a squared, a squared minus x squared equal to 2x squared minus a squared squared. Oh, okay, so it's, it's not that bad because uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, so, so some of the terms from the left and right will cancel, so it's not, it's, it's not going to be that bad. Okay, so if you square this, it's going to be 4x to the fourth. You have to double the props, it's minus 4a squared x squared. And then square the, the, the lowest term is a squared squared, which is a to the fourth. And now you see that these two cancel. Oh, that's amazing. It looked really bad, but uh, at the end of the day, you can do it. Okay. So far, so good? Okay. And then I move this to the other side, and I get 0 equals to 4x to the 4th. Negative 4, this would be plus 4. So negative 4 plus 4 is negative 3. Negative 3, a squared, x squared. And uh, if you solve this, you get either x equal to 0, but you have to throw out the x equal to 0 case because that gives you the boundary value. So the only uh, legit solution to this will be x equal to uh, x equal to uh, square root of 3 over 2a. That's what you get. And for that, you're going to get y as uh, one half, negative one half of a. If, I, if you plug it in here and solve for y, you'll get that. And then once you plug this in here, the area will be x is square root of 3 over 2a, whereas a minus negative one half a will be this. So you get the same answer as before. You get uh, 3 radical 3 over 4 a squared. So you get the same answer. But okay, what, what's the intuitive way to look at this problem? How would you know the answer without even solving this? What does this actually, what kind of triangle actually corresponds to the largest area triangle? Yes? Isosceles. Well, it's always isosceles. <coughs> Among the isosceles, which is special? Huh? No, not right angle. Apparently not. Right angle will be this one where x is equal to a, but that, that wasn't one of our solutions. All the same size. Come on, you forgot the name for that triangle? Equilateral, yes, yes. It's equilateral, okay? And it kind of makes sense. Among all the isosceles triangles that you can draw inside, the equilateral one actually is the most symmetric one, right? And often in, in geometry, when you have these optimization questions, the most symmetric one does give you the, the best answer. Yes? Isn't isosceles when you have two of the same? Isosceles is two same sides. Equilateral is everywhere the same side. So you can't ask, how can it be equilateral and isosceles at the same time? Oh, yeah, you can. Equilateral is a special case of an isosceles triangle. It's just like Maritime College, SUNY Maritime College is a special college among the maritime colleges, right? Are we a maritime college? Yeah. SUNY Maritime College is a SUNY Maritime College and they're also a maritime college. Yeah. At least two of the same sides? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought it was like two. No, no, no. No, it's not like 